Right, <clears throat> uh, as you might remember, um, a couple of videos ago, I was on about the fact that I was looking at getting a uh, uh, a compact um, telescopic sight, um, and I couldn't decide between a Hawk uh, compact, um, the Discovery VT3 series, or the Little Optizan um, CS thing. Uh, right, well, the Optizan's still not in the country, they're still not available. Um, and the Hawk, after having a quick look at it, I wasn't that keen on the... It's got quite high turrets on the Hawk. Um, and even though I do like Hawk products, they're very well made. Um, I wasn't that keen on the tall turrets. And then when I looked at this a bit more, this has actually got a lot of features that are really good for the money. Because this was 100 quid cheaper than the, uh, the Optizan. And the same price as the Hawk. But this is a first focal plane. So, let's have a little look, shall we? I've already opened this box, so um, I'll go through what I've done anyway, already. So, there it is. Hawk Discovery. Um, it's a 3 to 12 by 44, first focal plane scope. Um, just run through what comes with it first before I talk about the scope in more detail. So it's got some quite nice um, quality flip-up covers, which are really smart. Um, and they just pull on, pull off. Back one, it's spring-loaded. Clip shut, so I've got those, they come with it. You get full instruction manual that comes with it. Oops. You get a nice uh, metal, rather well made push on side wheel. It's not marked up, it's not calibrated, so you can put your own calibrations on that which is handy because the ones that come calibrated, they very rarely are uh, set for the ranges they say you are because it obviously varies on what ammunition you're using. So you're better off with one that's got no calibrations on it. Um, and then you can do it yourself. A uh, little Allen key that you use to tighten up the grub screw on the, uh, on the little side wheel. Oh, you can see that. Light's not very good in here. There you go. A little grub screw there, you see. So it push fits over. Tighten up that grub screw, secures it to it. Um, guarantee. And um, a nice little shabby cleaning cloth. And you also get um, a set of mounts. Yep, yeah, like I say, you get a set of mounts. Um, you can specify at the time of purchase what mount you want, um, 11 mil or Picatinny, all my rifles have got Picatinny so I like a nice set of Picatinny mounts, as you can see, quite nice, seem quite heavy duty, um, they've got a nut fixing on the end of them rather than the normal bolts and they look pretty good then. Quite durable, quite tough. So, get a set of mounts as well. Keep all that separate. Um, and that's it for the actual uh, what you get in the kit. So, really, you get quite a lot for your money, really. Set of mounts, um, side wheel, flip up lens covers, and I'll just show you this. You also get a honeycomb, oops, drop the bloody thing, a honeycomb uh, sunshade or anti glare. That comes free as well, and that just screws in the front. So when you look at what you get for your money, you get an awful lot of stuff 
for the for the for the for your cash really you know you get a lot of stuff for what you're paying the thing is as well unlike a lot of cheaper scopes that seem to come with all sorts of bits and pieces that you get for free but at the end of the day the scope itself is fairly rubbish and what you're paying for is all the bits and pieces that make it look good because it's got this it's got that it's got spirit levels and god knows what um but the actual basic intrinsic scope isn't very good. I have to say, I'm going to sit down and do this. Get this camera set up properly. The actual scope is very good quality. Um, it's quite small, it's about 10 and a half inches long. It's light. I'll tell you exactly how long it is. It should say on the box. No, it doesn't. I think it's, I think it's about 10 inches long. Um, it's lightweight. Everything about it feels really good quality. When you pick it up, it feels, you know, like it feels it's a chunky little thing. It's only little, but it's chunky. But it's not got those really tall turrets that the, uh, the Hawk has. It's got quite short... Um, turrets they're pull up lift click and lock to push down adjustments on them same side pull it out click your adjustments in push it in and it locks it in place and it does lock it in place as well it's really solid um, side focus for the parallax really nice nicely weighted as well it's not loose and slack so it's going to you know, throw itself off or move of its own accord. It's really good. Focus at the back. Simple, straightforward turn. It's not a locking one, but it's um, it's got a good, decent amount of torque to it, so it's not going to move once you've set it. And then the um, zoom. And again, it's got a bit of... Uh, Bit of resistance to it, bit of torque to it, so you know once you set it up, that whatever you're doing, it isn't going to move. Like I said, this is a first focal plane scope, um, and the first focal plane, the aim points don't shift as you alter the magnification. So if at 30 yards you're aiming, you have to aim an inch high, then no matter what magnification you put the scope on, the same mill dot. Will be the one that you use to uh, to compensate whereas uh, a second focal plane scope as you alter the magnification the uh, the mill dots or the hash hashes that you're using to um, compensate for your uh, aim points higher or lower only work at one set magnification as soon as you change the mag all of that goes out the window and they completely change on a first focal plane scope it doesn't so if at 40, so say you're zero at 30 yards, and at 40 yards you have to aim one mil dot high. On a second focal plane scope, that will only apply at whatever magnification you uh, zero your rifle scope in at. So if you do it at say 10 times at 30 yards, and you need to aim one hashtag at one mil dot high at 40 yards, that will only work at 10 times. If you put your scope down to four times or go up to 15 times and just aim one mil dot above it on the uh, on the reticule, you'll miss. First focal plane, that doesn't apply. The, uh, the mil dots stay exactly the same in comparison to your target. The only thing that does change is the size of the ret grows with the target. So when you're at low ret, low mag, the mag, the uh, ret is quite small. When you go up to the higher mags, the rescue grows in comparison to the uh, the target. Now, in the early days of first focal plane scopes, there was a tendency that at the lower mags, the ret would be so small you can hardly see it. And then at the higher mags, it would be so thick that it would obscure um, small targets. Thankfully, the designers of scopes these days, they've got this ret design in business off to a fine art. And um, mostly on the really good scopes now, 
when they go down into the lowest mags, you can still see the wreck quite clearly. It'll still, it will be very fine, but you can still see it. And then when you go up to the higher mags, the wrecks don't get so big that they obscure the target. And this is a prime example. This is very, very good. Um, for the price of this scope, this has got a really good rep. Um, it's well thought out. Uh, the magnification range suits it. When you're at low mags, it doesn't go too small. When you're at the higher mags that the scope can do, up to like, what, uh, 12 times, it doesn't obscure the target at all. It's really good. It's well thought out. It's got a really, really good rep. And a first focal plane, dead handy. Really good. Um, I mean, you don't have to use the, uh, the mill dots. On this you can dial in because if you just pull them up you can dial into whatever they've got resettable turrets as well so you can once you've zeroed it you can set your uh, turret to zero and then pull it up and uh, click it round to whatever you've uh, set it up for at different ranges so you can use it that way you can use it as adjustable turrets or you can use the first focal plane and use the mill dots on it I've got to say, everything feels really good. These turrets are really good. They feel good, they feel good quality. The clicks are audible. They feel dead, really positive. Um, it locks down really tight, you know, that's going nowhere. Um, everything about it feels really good quality. And I can't remember how small it is, it's tiny. And when you look through it, the optics are superb. It's really clear. There's no chromatic aberrations on it at all. Um, I used it last night as it was going dusk. Um, have a little look because it's starting to go at sunset and that's when you really see whether a scope's any good or not um, and yeah still really good really crystal clear and that's all the way through the zoom ranges as well and the, uh, the parallax adjustment really really does make a nice sharp image um, even close in at the higher mag put the parallax down to its lowest settings and it's really good really really nice um, the only thing on it I didn't like it came with I don't know where you can see these. It came with these little tiny rubber O-rings, these little red O-rings pushed into the holes in the adjusters. And to me, um, I couldn't see the point in having little red sort of coloured bits inside of the, uh, the turrets. Um, to me, it cheapened um, the looks of the scope because I think that that is a very, very professional looking well-made optical instrument you know it's a nice telescopic sight it doesn't need little red um just just there just for a bit of color don't like it didn't need it but thankfully they just pop out with a pin so i got rid of them because i don't like them i prefer the more a more classic looking scope and i think they just cheapened the look of the scope it just made it look a bit you know, as if it was trying to uh, sell itself on looking a bit bling instead of concentrate on the fact that it's actually an exceptionally well made and very good scope. It's got quite a nice matte anodized finish to it. Um, like I say, everything, all the, all, the, uh, all the controls feel really nicely weighted. You know, that zoom range is really smart. The eye focus is really good. The lenses have got really nice coatings on them. It's great. I think for the money, if you're after in the market for a small, compact telescopic sight, you're going to have to go a long way to beat that. Because for the features that it's got for the price, this Discovery Scope is very, very good. You know, you're looking at buying a first focal plane scope for the price of its competitor's second focal plane. And a first focal plane, especially in air gunning, it really does make a lot of sense. Because, you know, as an air gunner, you do have to do a lot of holding over and holding under, especially if you're shooting 2.2, or even worse, as I now am shooting 0.25. It just makes life so much easier if once you've done your practice setups and noted how much hold over and how much hold under you need that you know that if you have to up the zoom you're not looking at a whole new set of readings you know that that one mil dot at 40 yards 
is still one mil dot at 40 yards at whatever mag range you're on. And likewise, if you need to aim mil dot under or two mil dots under, it's the same whether you're on five times mag or 12 times mag. It's a fantastic, fantastic idea. And the, um, I don't think I'll be able to show you the rat. I might be able to, but I don't think I'll be able to. Mm, it's not really playing ball. Yeah, you can't see it very clearly through the uh, through my camera. But it's got a fantastic ret on it. It really has. It's very, very good. And I'll show you what I mean. That was at that was at the lower mag. That was at three times. I've round ramped it up to 12 times and we'll see whether you can see it again. Just bear with me a second. There we go. See how it's grown? And that's what it does. The actual red grows as you uh, increase the magnification. So there it is. I think it looks so much better with them things took out. I really do. They, they did cheapen it. I don't know why they put them in. It makes it look bling. I suppose it appeals to some people. Probably younger air gunners. Maybe I'm getting a bit old. Um, but I think that's a very classy looking optical instrument. It doesn't need any bling. It's just a really well-made optical instrument. It's, it should sell on its use and um, its optical qualities and the fact that it's well-engineered. It doesn't need any bling on it. It's really nice. Those turrets are really good quality. You know, you look at them turrets, wouldn't be out of place on a scope costing, what, two, three times what this thing does. Um, it's ridiculous, really, um, how good this is for what you're paying. You know, it's a really, really nice bit of kit. It really is. And when you look at that, you look at the actual scope, ignore everything else. Look at that. Absolute bargain. Um, just for the scope, as it is, with the quality of it. And then when you look at all the other bits and pieces, and they're not rubbish bits and pieces either. That's a nicely weighted, nicely machined bit of kit. Nice side wheel. Plenty of room to put your tape on and mark your... Um, Parallax settings and ranges off on it. You know, that. Little sunshade. It's well made. Feels pretty robust. It's nice. Free flip up lens covers. You know, and they're not cheap and nasties. Like the rubberized bit on the front there. And then the front bit's quite hard plastic. But it feels good. It feels durable. It feels like they're going to last. And a set of mounts as well. Um, really, really good. Um, as I understand it, these are distributed in this country, and I got this from uh, Sure Shot Air Guns. Um, and uh, fair dues, the service is excellent. Ordered it, and it arrived the next day. Really good. Um, no messing about, no delivery um, hanging around, or, you know, oh, we're going to post it out next week, or it's going to be a couple of days, or anything like that. Ordered it, bang, next day, there it was. Really good. Sure shot air guns, they do the um, those little Ataman air rifles as well, and little tiny bullpup things. Um, they were really smart, I was thinking of getting one of them once. Um, might still do, yeah, still thinking about it, but they're really, really nice little air rifles. But yeah, well and truly happy with the uh, the service from uh, Sure Shot. Very good, very good, well worth a shout out there. So there you go, Discovery VT3 scope. 3 to 12 by 44, first focal plane. And what a lovely, lovely thing it is. It really is. It's very, very nice. The optics in it are superb. Really, it's an absolute bargain, this thing is. A bargain. To get a first focal plane scope with optics as good as they are, and that really nice ret for the money that these go for, 
um, let alone with all the extras that get thrown in with it. You just can't go wrong. It's a really, really nice bit of kit. Like I say, it do, does normally come with those holes there, have these little red o-rings pushed into them to give it a bit of colour. But for me, I thought they cheapened the look of the scope. I much prefer it like that. More subdued, looks dead classy. And it's a lovely bit of kit. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.